Welcome to Talk Around Riyadh, the Wheel of Time showcast. I am your host, Joe Perry, here with my co-host, Jen Isgro and Tom Kokoza. Jen, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm happy to be back on a Friday. And um, we got a pretty good topic here. I've got my coffee, so everyone fear not. I will be awake tonight. And uh, I'm excited to get going. Nobody knows that you were falling asleep, Jen, unless they watch the YouTube video. If they watch the YouTube video, they absolutely know that I was falling asleep. <laughs> my eyebrows, I keep trying to pull my eyebrows up. <laughs> with your, with your no, I not you were, fingers. I thought you were just going to come with scotch tape today with, the, no. with your eyes taped open. I just like, I can't, I was coming off of work last week and I was like, I'm awake. It's fine. I don't need coffee. And that was not true. I, I absolutely need coffee every time. So. I've learned my lesson. That's it. How about you, Tom? You need some coffee? No. Oh, well, you can always use some, but uh, no, I'm all right. I'm doing well, Joe. I'm excited about this week's episode. You've been, uh, we did a lot of prep work for it. I'm playing this one well in advance. So I think everyone's going to really enjoy it. We're going to get a three for one tonight. So that's pretty cool. I have to point out that today is March 1st. So as those of you who are watching can see, Uh, we've got a new uh, uh, page on the calendar there. It's like Joe doing here. The lovely (laughs) and sexy Michael Livingston and his dog. um, I forgot his dog's name. Is it King or Prince Ferdinand or something? Prince Ferdinand or King Ferdinand? It's something like that. Yeah. Like that. Um, Uh, We're getting old. It's a three for one on three one. Ooh. That's right. Oh shit, Jen. Oh my god. Just blew my fucking mind. <laughs> um, all right. So before we get into that though, Jen, what's happening? So not too much is happening. Uh, even though we had our rap party about uh seventeen months ago, they're still <laughs> filming season three. <laughs> But it's been exciting because we've seen some cast members posting shots from what looks like the Aya Waste. So we know yeah. that Yosha Stradowski is there. We know Ayula Smart is there. And an interesting person posted on his Instagram story this morning saying that he was going to be in Cape Town for about a month. And that person is Alexander Kareem, who plays Luz Theron Telemann. So that kind of confused me a little bit. I wanted to round some ideas. I want to talk about it again with you guys. What do you think they could be doing with Luz Theron himself? The original Luz, not Luz Reborn. I was very surprised to see this. And I thought to myself, are they going to be shooting flashbacks in Cape Town? Like I thought we would have done those scenes in Prague or Jordan Studios, I, I was kind of wondering, like, oh, well, they're just like, we're going to be in Cape Town already, so we can use, I think they constructed a studio there, or they're working in a studio over there, so they would just, like, just come on, maybe because of Alexander Kareem's scheduling. But then, Tom, you posed something that I hadn't thought about, and I kicked myself for it. <laughs> yeah, um, so... In the show, you've already seen uh, when Loghain hears that you kind of see those periods uh, out of the taint uh, talking to him, and I think that that might be what's happening here. I think that you might get some loose Theron in Rand's head, and they may have him on set to to show that. Uh, yeah, that's that's my guess. When I heard a month, I'm like, oh, that's I guess that's what we're doing. Because otherwise, why would he be there? Like, I, I, I mean... That's what sense to me. I think I think it's really good if, like, because we know he loves to have a flashback at the beginning of episode eight to lose Theron. If they have that flashback, and then as like a cold open scene, they do maybe it's like Mirren and lose Theron or something, and then like not the hot cl- of the season, but like the last scene is like Rand's just talking to somebody, and like you see it's lose. And you're like, oh my god! Up close to him in like a room, having a conversation with somebody, or you hear him talking to somebody. Maybe, or like, like you know, he doesn't even realize like a first that we do. <laughs> and the oh camera goes into the room, and you just see Alexander Kareem standing there with him. Or he could just be like, "Who are you?" You know, like <laughs> that would yeah, be so good. I, I, we already like, at the end of the last season. <laughs> we did. Yeah, when Rand uh-huh, did with the land. Oh. Yeah. 
All right, fine. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I, I think it was the last line of the show. <laughs> it's him again lying there, Rand, and he's uh, and he's like, <laughs> "Who are you?" And it cuts back, and instead of uh, Elaine, it's. <laughs> Well, that was one of the suggestions <laughs> as to who he was talking to, right? So people thought yeah. that that could be loose there. And yeah, I thought that. I, I, I do. I do give you a little tweak on that, Jim. But I do like that a lot. I think if you end like the last thing that Rand is like, he's there with the, the IEL chieftains, right? And you see him sitting like at the front of, uh, you know, a, a circle, and it's panning around. You just hear all of them kind of talking at advice what to do, and you just hear as it's panning around. One guy is just shouted, like, kill them, kill them, kill them all. That's what you should remember, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then it pans around. You see that's Luz Theron. It's going to be weird so to see that Luz, since we've only already seen, like, the very, like, in control, you know, Luz before he had, yeah, obviously. Well, but we I, haven't seen any of that So, yet. So if they do what you're suggesting, do you think we're going to get crazy Luz Theron and maybe a cold open prior to that? I, I think you almost have to. You him. Like, okay, this is was at the end. He was mad. Um, and then that's the guy that you have like in his head. I then again, though, if he's there for a month, that probably indicates it's not just a a, a one spirit, he's probably going to be in a lot of it. I also right. thought at one point that maybe in Roydian it goes like all the way back to Luce Theron. Well, and also, he had, like, well, it does go back to the breaking. Yeah, so, yeah but like the stepping back through his... Yeah, yeah. It's not his... Aunt, well, it's not his yeah, answer. Loses, answer, answer but, yeah, I guess that doesn't make sense then. But Okay, follow-up question. That's, if they're going to lose Theron mad before, like a, in a flashback, we're going to get a Ileana! <sighs> I mean, if we're getting like Winter Dragon, are we going to get like that scene? As far as farming back. <laughs> uh, well, that's a good that's a good question. If we, we haven't seen or heard yeah. that far as far as is um back for season three. I don't I don't heard anything about yeah. that. So no. I mean he if they're flashbacks and with the Shamael in them, he would obviously be in, you know, yeah. wouldn't be so if Far as far as was filming for season three. Not because is Shamael still alive or maybe yeah, coming right. back already, it's probably like flashback stuff. But so let me ask you a question on this then. Um the um the me of uh, Ishi's capture um uh, stealing away in war are very odd with the fact that like he could partially escape mm -hmm. about twenty years every thousand years and he like ebbs and flows during that time. So like he's around right over he disappears for like a, a thousand years and comes back. And he screws up our uh, it's a trollic first and then yeah. our, whatever it is. I think it's Dr. Hawkwing, right? But um, mm -hmm. he does all this stuff, right? He sets up the Black Aja, he does all these things while he comes back. Do you think the show's gonna bother explaining all of that? Because if they're not, then Ishii shouldn't be around, he should just be sealed up because he already sealed them. You already well, saw what that he sealed up in the boar. Right? What in the boar? What technically he should have been sealed like that, like what we saw. But all was supposed to be sealed. Yeah, I don't even know what time that happened because Luz Theron didn't look mad at that time. So, like maybe they're gonna say like Ishamio was like first separately, and then everybody no, else. No, no, he says all the others were already. Oh really? He said in that scene that the, the others strike, were already did been they, did sealed he, away. Did, what does he say in that scene? They didn't go to Shia. He's Gullier. going to do the Shia Gold Strike. Right so in that. the show, he gets everybody else separately first. He, like and they then trap, the they try to trap the Forsaken. Like right. they haven't talked like, to Dark One or what's going on with that yet. We don't know if there's like another okay. seal. So Someone tells me there's going to be another seal that they used on the Dark One. Like it's it's not like books where everything happened at one time in one place. It's like right, he trapped all, all the Forsaken individually. For Maybe he got a few at a time. Okay. Uh, they each got them seal, and then he's gonna go to Shao Ghoul, and I guess okay. you know seal. Be, I'm I'm putting my money on it, man. There's gonna be a big giant seal somewhere for the yeah, dark one. That's what they're gonna have to do. I can't video, unless there's a little one, little seal, and that would actually be interesting if there is another seal and it's a little seal, and you're like, oh, what's this little one? And it's it's the dark one. You expect it to be a huge seal because then they could do this. I know I said seal a lot, Tom. 
Um, but then they can do like what happens on, you know, what later on, actually like giving the seals to gain and having to break it at the right time. And yeah, otherwise they just could carry around this giant wagon. Well, they're all broken already. Stones. They're all broken. No, I'm, I'm saying the there's shows, another man. seal. Right, there's right. what I'm saying. Right. Th- there has to be another way for it to work. And we could go into that all in, in, in another episode, just literally like what, how does the, like the ceiling of the board work on the show? What do we think it's going to be? Because it's not the same. Uh, like definitively, no. and I think that you could do. My point is, I guess that you can do a lose mad scene without the issue part, because I don't know if that happens on the show. And I don't think you should do. I've been saying this from the get go. I don't think you should do uh, lose creates dragon mad until the eventual season seven of this show. Like so that you have the beginning of Lose going mad and creating Dragon Mount, and the end of that episode is Rand on top of Dragon Mount, choosing a different way. But okay, that's me. All right, that's a lot to think about. There, it's an interesting conversation, and there's a lot of different possibilities. I hope we're getting. Um, I hope it's for what you said, Tom, that they're going to go back. We're going to get some Rand and Loose Theron conversations. Um. And I do get another flashback, and I hope we see Crazy Loose there in sometime this season. All right, so let's get on to our main topic for the episode. I said before you're going to get a three-in-one, and I meant that literally. So Actually, technically, it's a two-in-one. Two-in-one, one, yeah. But mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's technically a two-in-one, because we're going to be talking about um, a character we just cast, or at least one of his alter egos is cast and we're going to be talking about slayer so we've got Woo-hoo. the uh tr- the triumvirate of slayer who is isam and luke mantir um which i when i researched for this i totally forgot that slayer is just the name that hopper calls him so that's why he's slayer okay. like it's not like calls him slayer and there's like you know the four slayer it's it's just like hopper calls him to parent and that's what parent calls him so um, so let's Isam, Isam Mandragoran, who is one of the uh, people who makes up Slayer. Um, so he is a cousin of Lan Mandragoran. He's described. Oh, Jen, Lana. you want to bring us into? That's right. I'm sorry, Jen. Okay. Uh, so I uh, first appearance of Slay. So I'll do Slayer for Isam because that's what he looks like. Okay. Um, the first time he peers, and then and then the first time Perrin gets a good look at him. So I'm gonna read both. Okay. Okay. So. Nope. Uh... Suddenly he saw another man atop a sandy hill. The fellow was too distant to see clearly. Just a tall, dark-haired man, but plainly not a Trolloc or anything of the sort. In a blue coat with a bow on his back, stooping over something on the ground hidden by the low brush. Yet there was something familiar about him. Um, so basically, he wolf. He's chasing him, and then Hopper stops him. Um, he says, "You slayer, young bull. He is here in the flesh, and he can kill." In the flesh? You mean not just to be here in the flesh? I do not know. It is a thing dimly remembered from long ago. Come again, as so much else. Things of the shadow walk the dream now. Creatures of heart fang. There is no safety. And then I think he actually went into the Tower of Genji. So then later, he this is what he looks like. Sorry, I don't, that was chapter to the Tower of Genji. This is Shadow Rising, chapter 28. This is chapter 33, a new weave in the pattern. Nope, sorry, that's Luke. Ignore that. This is <laughs> chapter... Sorry. Chapter 42, a missing leaf. And there his quarry was, a hundred paces below, dark-haired and dark-coated. A tall man crouched beside a table-sized granite outcrop, his own half-drawn bow in hand, studying the slope farther down with eager patience. This was the first time Perrin had gotten a good look at him. A hundred paces was little distance for his eyes. This slayer's high-collared coat had a borderland cut, and his face looked enough like Lan's to be the warder's brothers. Only Lan had no brothers, no living kin at all that Perrin knew, and if he had had any, they would not have been here. 
A borderlander, though, maybe Shinarin, though his hair was long, not shaved to a top knot, and was held back by a braided leather cord just like Lan's. He could not be Malkieri. Lan was the last living Malkieri. Mm. So you think living. It's also not true, but that's just. Well, okay. <laughs> All right. That's Isam slash Slayer. All right. So. So it is like cousin. So his mother, uh, so Isam's mother, her name was Brian, and she actually escaped Malkir with uh, with Isam when it was overrun by Trollocs. Mm-hmm. Um, they escaped to the Blight, and eventually, at one point, I think they were attacked by Trollocs, and Isam did survive. There's no real details on how he survived, just that he grew up in the town, um, which, if anyone yeah. remembers, that's the town in the Blight with the uh, the 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 Rill, and not, that's where they not good. Yeah, it's a lot of <laughs> a lot of things happen there. Yeah, so um, I, just in um, looking through the the interview database, right? It was basically said that um, when they were uh, and and his mother was killed. They knew who he was, and it was purposely. It was he was um, he was raised by the shadow on purpose as a potential uh, bargaining chip or whatever to have a member of a royal Malkiri family who was uh, raised, born in to be by, uh, of the shadow. That would be a useful tool, and that's that. That was the reasoning as that happened. So it wasn't like he survived by his wits. He was mm-hmm. uh, well, he was the baby. Yeah, so like, yeah. <laughs> Well, it was like how you said that, Joe. And I wanted to be clear. Like that was yeah. the, the apparently uh, Jordan uh, made that clear in some. Pictures. So I have a question. I don't know if there's an answer to this. So there's a dark prophecy later on, you know, up with some in it. It's one of the prophecies that's scrawled in the, um, in the uh, dungeon in Valdara when, you know, with the uh, night. Mm-hmm. Um, like, do I don't remember. Is, is, is that scrawling? old prophecy or is it like him proclaiming himself so i wonder if this is the prophet isam wasn't killed and he was brought to the town and raised because of like this prophecy existed already it's a good question i don't know the answer i do know that the other half of slayer right did um did travel his fate due to foretelling right so i don't know if there was definitely prophecy or if there was poetry about them. I, I don't know if it was clear or not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the town though, right? That So that's where he, you know, learned to hunting and killers, mm-hmm. um, which I guess some well later on. And it's, it's interesting because we don't really get uh, much information about Luke's like temperament and like, you know, hunter or, you know, or anything like that. I mean, he was for the sword, right? So, so we're talking now. We're switching over to Luke Mantier. Jen, did you have a, yes. a read in for him? Yes. Sorry, I thought you. I didn't realize you. That's okay. Go ahead. Um, that one was chapter thirty-three, I believe. Thirty-three. Sorry. A new <laughs> weave in the pattern. <laughs> um. Okay, the Lord is almost on the boy's heels. A tall, broad-shouldered man in his middle years, with a hard, angular face and dark reddish hair white-winged at the temples. There was an arrogant cast to his dark blue eyes, and he certainly looked every inch a nobleman, in a finely cut green coat discreetly embroidered in golden scrolls down the sleeves, and gauntlets worked in thread of gold. Gold work wrapped his sword scabbard as well, and banded the tops of his polished boots. Somehow he made the simple act of striding in through the doorway grand. Perrin despised him on sight. (laughs) <laughs> that <line>. <laughs> so good. <laughs> uh, that's hysterical. But where is he like been living? Like, where, like, or he's just in the dr- like? He's Slayer. Like, he's that's just Slayer. I know. I know. I can't like. Where's he? He was in the town, I think, and then he just kind of travels around and does. I mean, he's to, he's been busy. He just go through Teleron Riyadh and then go wherever he wants because he's yeah he yeah he steps, steps out. Okay. Yeah, and this is first. To, well, it's his first appearance in the story, but he's done some things that we read about earlier in the yes in the book. The so, no, about? I was going to say the 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 gray man, white tower. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. That's, he also that's... wore the uh, the death of the Black Sisters. Uh, yeah, in, Joya and in, uh, Amika. Uh, yeah. In uh, the End Dragon Reborn, or the begin? Was it the beginning yeah, of Shadow Rising? Yeah. Beginning of the beginning of Rising. That's right. Um, okay. yeah. They're captured at the end of Dragon Reborn. So he's like mm-hmm. working for the Shadow. Like he's yes. yeah. Getting his... dr- he gets his orders directly from the Dark One. He go- He's mm-hmm. been to the Doom. Okay. Which is probably one of the only people who is not a Forsaken, or if the only person who's not a Forsaken, or was mm, did, Fane, I, Fane, Fane, never, there too. Fane was there. Fane was there. Okay. Yeah. Which is funny. But, sorry. Yeah. No, you first. Uh, I was going to say, which is funny because uh, Slayer goes to the Pit of Doom, and the Dark One tells him to go kill Fane, which is what <laughs> this whole this whole thought in the Two Rivers is about. Really, right? That's the only reason Slayer's there. He's not there to mess with Perrin. He, he's there to kill Fane. Yeah, but not only to kill Fane? Because like, I feel like you just kill him. Yeah, why is he... he can't, he's, then, having like, what's tr- the... he's, he's having trouble com- because Fane's got his own Trollocs. Remember, there's two yeah. sets of Trollocs there that are not that are that, working for Fane, and the other set's working with Slayer. Right. And Slayer's so I think Slayer's having a... Trollocs. Yeah. In. And Fane's got white cloaks around him, so it's hard, I think. And I don't know, maybe he can't like pull Fane, Fane Dillon to tell Renner yet. Like, you know, I don't, I don't get him yeah. there because Fane's probably just so weird and twisted at this point. Who knows if he even sleeps? He's just insane. <laughs> that's, um, also, that's also true. He just lies back with his eyes open, <laughs> staring out, and they just don't move creepily. Oh. So, uh, yeah, you mentioned about, um, you know, Slayer going uh, to to commune Dark One directly. Presumably, that's where he gets his, uh, his gift power, because he has no channeling ability, and nor is he a dreamer. No. Uh, he doesn't have the ability. To, he's not a wolf brother. None of that is, is, is him. He has his own special ability to do this weird Teleraryon trick. Yeah, just go there and watch. I don't even think he knows how to go there. Like in, the, like he, when he goes he's going not, to sleep at all. In, yep. Yeah. It's just to enter the and use that opportunity once you're there to transmogrify. Yeah. So he's got two powers. Technically, he's got that power, and then he's got the power to switch back and forth his appearance between Luke and Isam. Right, but that's only linked. That's the power. He can only do it yeah. when he's in the world of dreams. He can't do it in the real world. So we have to he come out the world of so dreams, okay. change, and, and then come, come back, back out. out. So yeah. there's okay. never like a real answer. Just like something happened, and they merged. We don't yeah. really know ha- what it is. They don't say. That. So there's the prophecy. I mean, l- well, well, let's talk for a second, right? So he was the first prince of Andor. He's brother to Tigraine, which is Rand's mom. So technically, he's the uncle, Rand's and Galad's uncle. Both mm-hmm. of them, right? Galad. Uh, he was born in 954 to the queen, uh, as I mentioned. At that time, when the Queen Modrellan was queen of Andor, Guitar Morosa was her advisor. Advisor. Well, the advisor. Uh, <laughs> she was the advisor. <laughs> that again. Please don't. No, I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> so in 971, you mentioned a foretelling, <laughs> Tom. In 971, she had a foretelling that the outcome of the last battle depended on Luke going to the Blight. So Luke went there. No one saw him again, so everyone just presumed he was dead. But one person did see him that we know of, and that person was Janduin, Rand's dad. Um, so this was after T- um, right after Ail died, giving birth to Rand. Jand- Janduin was distraught. So he took a one-way trip to the Blight to commit suicide by Shadow Spawn. Um, and then it was said that he encountered a man who looked just like Shail slash Tigrain, and he couldn't raise his weapon to him because of the resemblance. And that person killed him, and that was Luke. Um or, uh, or, or Slayer. I mean, already Slayer at this time. Yeah, I would think don't know. When um, the merge happened, no timeline on when the two of them, like the Lukis, saw merge. But I would guess too. I would think it happened before. Right. I, there's just no indication, specifically, like I don't know the fact that he followed this foretelling. 
leads me to believe that Luke was not initially a dark friend or evil, right? No, I don't think he was. Right. So I think that, you know, uh, him wasn't fighting against him was probably something that was more Slayer related than than Luke related. Yeah. Well, it was like an Aiel. There was just like a, well, look at the I, I don't know. It's possible. I don't know if it's it's necessarily, uh, you know. Yeah. It was but, the war. Yeah, it was right yeah. at the end of the war. So, what is the purpose of this? Like, what does this happen? How does this happening? Well, number one, how does this? How does like matter? Like, why did Luke? Like, what's the what's mortality? the reason that this had to happen? And also, like, what's the purpose of it as far as like the dark one? Because Isam can play all on his own and just he didn't need another person. I don't know. Like, what's the purpose of this? Who's who's uh, who's benefiting? Urge. Oh well, okay. I think that's a good point. I think that um, I don't know if it ever was played out really yeah. well. I guess. No. Yeah, I, I we don't well, know the words of the foretelling either. So, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, I tend to believe that Slayer didn't gain his abilities until he merged. I think that. Yeah, it's the, part of the saying like he didn't get the Telerenriad yeah. piece of this until there were two souls in one body. I think that that yes, that, it was all, I think it was all part of one trans. Right. But I think that that that's it. That purpose of of doing this is that you needed those two pieces, and why they had to, to be these two pieces. I don't know. There's obviously there's blood two very very important heroes. I don't know if there's any other reason for that. There's not like. They don't have any genetic predisposition to channeling or anything like that. That that, that they don't channel. It's not part of what Slayer is. So, and I don't know I, how the outcome yeah. of the last battle is affected yeah, by it. Like, basically, they're uh, saying okay, Slayer so, had formed for them to win the last battle. Is kind of what so it's Slayer like. had to be formed so that Perrin would have a reason to learn the Wolf Dream. Uh -huh. He didn't. That wasn't his. Was though. Uh, I, well, later on, yeah. it's why he he learned he learned how to beat Slayer. Right, but the, but what, the only reason he needs the wolf dream is is to protect Rand from Slayer, though. So it's like yeah. A, well, he also <laughs> Rand. He he. Even though I like you know, this is a little bit more. I don't know how potent this help is, but he does help Rand on on the mountain of veins of gold. He's there, like in the in of channeling good vibes. He's there. Is yeah. he channeling good vibes? I, no, I know he's there, and he's like talking yeah. about the big storm that's happening up there, and like or it whatever. Is. It's like I think that suffers from the split of storylines. Is he that gives support like emotional, like yeah, uh, that's one of the two times that that's one of the two times the parent has to be by Rand, or one of the three times the parent has to be by Rand in order for Rand to to win. Is that it's like if he's not there, like he he is like a tipping point. Well, it would be. I don't remember. And and, and I'm sure so why you're gonna be. This is why I don't love the land fear reveal. Because Perrin's oh. whole journey in the story is to become so strong in the dream that he's able to. But she's. It's more of a trick, though. She's more. It's not like overpowers him. She just tricks him. Like that could have been in Teleron Riad, and she could have played a trick on. You know, what I'm saying it's more of a mind but, game. But like him learning all become a master of the dream. Yeah. Like Slayer is the boss. That's the boss that he beats. But that's end. what Lanfear's trick is. She's playing into him being so overconfident about Teller and Riyadh right. that he doesn't think he could, you know, he thinks at that point he's become so confident he doesn't think that she could uh outsmart him or I don't mind that part of it. I'm yeah. saying that the why does Slayer need to be there? Slayer needs to be there so that Perrin can learn the dream. Why does Perrin need to learn the dream? Not just to beat Slayer, but to beat Lanfear, except he doesn't really beat Lanfear. So that the prophecy falls apart yeah. with with that well, it final doesn't real. Because they won the last battle, and it did affect the last battle. Okay. I, I mean, that's technically an outcome of the last battle, but... Um, yeah, I'm not we, we don't get the exact wording yeah. of that foretelling, so we don't know, like, we we can't really pick apart too much, um, and I think it's one of those things that people kind of forget about and care so much about that about that for us. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> like if Luke had stayed, it wouldn't have mattered because you still had to would have had female on the throne. It's not like he would have became the king or anything, right? Like no, no, he was still the moved. sword. <laughs> so him going didn't like wasn't like uh, he goes so that. Saying. Like there was no one left from the light, from the... Tr uh, yeah, but I don't from matters, the, right? it, 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 Well, it could have been... Well, then maybe if he stays, maybe then... Uh, More gays doesn't be queen and... Or uh, marries Mary of, instead of uh, uh, Tarangale. So, yeah, I guess there's that part of it, too. I didn't even think about it. Good, good call, Jen. Like, if he's just gone, the, the decks can be cleared. But Tarangale... Hold on a second. Wait, wait. Taryn gets me Gale. off every time we talk about it. He's him. married to Tigraine. Married to Tigraine, so that's his brother-in-law. I get it. Okay, yeah. I'm getting it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Grace oh, marries right, him right. to kind of yes. like keep the first Those person of the story parents, who was there. Say. Maybe she'd marry him to keep the continuity and be a yeah. different vibe, right? That's a, that's a good point. That yeah. could be it. We just needed to get Luke out of the way. Right, yeah. <laughs> oh, you and need sort of the blight. Where should, no, you need to get out of here. Where should I go? The blight. You should definitely go to the blight. Go to the blight. You need to go there, yeah. He's like back. Gowie. Like, I don't know about him, but I just imagine that he was like Gowie. Huh. We just I'm need to get Gowie this guy back. out of the picture so we can move on. <laughs> He's just going to screw Little, him did, little did there was going to be, the Dark One was going to take him and smush him together with. Yeah, uh, like you see, Dark, uh, like that's some. what I don't know. The Dark One sees him and is like, oh, this guy. This is the guy. Well, like, I, I think. Something with him. Or he's just like I, laughing I, and he's just like bored. He's like. Right. I think, what if I, right. I mush these two together? What would happen? He's making a potion yeah. of people. <laughs> it's like the people out of like the the motivations of characters. I guess it's important to have a authorial view, uh, to have Slayer in there to establish that souls can move between bodies. Okay. So that yeah. when that happens, it's not like well, we have a, is this happening? It, okay. Mm -hmm. Souls can be connected. Souls can move between. But these these are metaphysical did you, things. Did that did you edit out there? Did you edit the f word out yourself? I didn't hear the f word. That's what I'm saying. I thought you. It I sounded like you were saying something. It cut out, and it the word that went in there was the f word. <laughs> so I didn't know if you were self editing, Tom. Uh, I don't I know. It did. Did you I say? Think did you say fuck? I don't remember. I, it comes okay. out of my mouth so often. I don't know when I don't say it. <laughs> it sounded like I'm, you should I'm have said it, but it was, but nothing came out of your mouth. So I don't know if you, I didn't know if it cut out or you self edited. I, I, th I think I self edited. I'm sorry. I threw it the whole train of thought. And <laughs> yeah, I, man. I don't even I, like, I'm like, I wasn't that. But yeah, I think that that's like, it doesn't answer your question, but I think that's the other important thing as to why Slayer exists the way he exists is because you need to kind of have that for other things that happen in the books later. Well, it sounds like they just had, <laughs> Guitar was just trying to get everybody out of there because she tells T. Grain to get out of there too, yeah. right? She's like, That's get it. these people the fuck out of here. Well, T. Grain had a reason to have to get out. I mean, she had to... No, be... but it wasn't there a foretelling for her too? There Did was, there was. Guitar yeah. oh, no. right. said Maybe. was one. Who knows if they're actually... <laughs> <What? laughs> Yeah, guitar, guitar as well. Like, told I just really had happened. a foretelling guy. <laughs> what, what and I had just... another one. <laughs> what really happened was Guitar was with Tigran behind closed doors and called her a fucking bitch and says, nobody likes you. Get the hell out of here. And T or Tigran should have hated Tarangale so much that she could have been like, can you just say you well, had a foretelling like him. that I need to leave? And then I'll yes. leave and then we can yes. say it was That's because of the foretelling. Oh, <laughs> you can tell everybody you had a foretelling yeah. that I had to go. Oh. And then everyone won't hate me <laughs> and think I'm a really terrible mother for leaving yeah. my little son Galad. Oh my God. He'll be with fine. A guy uh, well, I she had a foretelling. Terrible. With a guy I thought was terrible. Oh my God. Everyone gives Luz Theron so much crap. What about Tigrain? We talked about this though. We did yeah. our Tigrain episode. I'm sorry, people. I won't go. I won't rip her a new one. There was a so the prophecy that I mentioned before, um, in the Great Hunt, it was scrawled on the Faldara dungeons. Um, well, I'm gonna read the part of it. Right, this is that daughter of the night um, prophecy. So this here is uh, Luke, Luke came to the mountains of doom. Isam waited in the high passes. The hunt is now begun. The shadows hound now course and kill. Ah, uh, that's a weird sentence. Uh, one did live and one did die, but both are. The time of change has come. Blood feeds blood. Blood calls blood. Is and blood and blood shall be. So, 
So that's so the you, prophecy, the dark prophecy about yeah. Luke and Esau. I was going to say, do you think like Luke died, but then like Esau's able to like, not just look like him, but like absorb his soul somehow. So it's not, so when he's being Luke, he's actually not Luke's personality, his original personality. I don't know if he's um, anyone's person. He's a new personality, I feel, or both okay. personalities at, at the same I, time. I think he is both at the same time. I do think that, like, when Luke, I think whatever, whatever aspects of Luke were there, but there, there's some of those that still exist, right? Like the 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 uh, but, not only that, but like the uh, the, the that Lord Luke, but, yeah. even though he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, but he is somebody who like inspires Rubes, yeah, right, yeah. So, not so that he was a baby, he doesn't know about nobility. Yeah, he literally grew up in the town from a baby, right. so he's just mm. been raised by horrible people and things. So, but what is it says here? One did live and one did die, but both are. So, so do we? One of them actually died, and I would, I would Luke who died. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah it's like corrupted. It. It's like yeah. he died and he took his soul in and like corrupted it, but took aspects of his soul. But like he's, it's not really anymore. That's what it kind of sounds like. So maybe he, some of his like, but even like when he's Lord in the town in not the town in Hammond's <laughs> Field, they don't know that he's like Luke Mantier. Right. Say so, but he's going by the name that he, that he, that he, his real name. Yeah, but nobody in the rivers knows. They don't know, Luke but like, other people might. Yeah, you can <laughs> so, say Luke, Lord. You can say I'm Lord Luke Mantier from Andor, and they still be like, oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Like <laughs> maybe the White Cloaks would know, yeah, but I don't know. yeah. Um, but I don't remember if he goes by like a last name, like a, or a house name when he's pretending to be, uh, I don't know, when he's pretending to be Lord Luke. Um, but yeah, so I guess die. So, hmm. so I guess he's the one who dies then, yeah, yeah, that makes more well, sense. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone thinks he's dead, so mm -hmm. if Esam died, then you'd have like. A good, you know, I don't know, nice or he was what his attitude was, but like absorbing a a friend's so be weird. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, talking about um his appearance in the books, you know, you're reading his appearance, which is in the Shadow Rising, but he does um his handiwork is, or as we mentioned in um. Um, is it that remember when is the gray man? Is that in the ground, uh, right? That's the like great the great hunt or yeah, dragon. Re is it the great hunt or the dragon reborn? I think it's the great, right? So that's when the, 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 uh, somebody shoots the cult right by the girls. Sherry and comes. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. We find out it was the gray man, a gray man. The gray man winds up dead in Sherry bed. That was Slayer who did that. Hmm. Came into the tower and killed the gray man after it was. It was Dragon, it's it was, Dragon Reborn, I think. Oh, it is Dragon Reborn. Yeah. That gray man was trying to kill Egwene, apparently. I didn't remember that that, that was the trying to do. But anyway, Slayer kills the gray man. Then, as we mentioned later on at the end of the Dragon Reborn, um, when Egwene and the uh, Elaine and Nynaeve have captured the two Black Aja at the very end, um, in the next book, they're still in tier, and Slayer comes and kills them, Amiko and joya oh, yeah. and he nails their tongues to the doors of their cells very oh, colorful rats. <laughs> so we have joya right we've met joya in the second season right that's the one played by joel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we've gotten some other black aja cast um who was the uh, what's her name and we know his yeah. cast mm -hmm. potentially some others do you think we're going to get Joya dying, right? So we've got a lot going on here, right? We think Lord Luke's going to be in it, right? Because of one of the scripts we heard, they mentioned Lord Luke. So we're <laughs> predicting Slayer in this. So we've got Joya. We've got Lord Luke. Are we going to get um, him killing her point this season? I don't think so. Um, she'll probably just end being one of the people that's like one of the like Leen, uh, with Leandrin going forward because it's all different now. I mean, she might die eventually, but I don't think it'll like, 
capture anyone in the same way right now. All right. Any any dif- different thoughts? To- no, I think your first time you're going to have uh, this character take in the series uh, will be in, in the two rivers. I think that they might find a way to go like, oh, remember that other character who died in the previous season? That was me too. But like, uh, I was dead who, today. Who, who who necessarily that would be? I was going to post that on Twitter today, to be honest with you, because I thought about it. I was thinking like, did we see Sandy Trump. work already? in the first two yeah in yeah. the first two seasons like that we're going to find out about when we meet him because i was and i was think back i never i didn't post it um but we can post that question when we post this episode um but yeah like if we got a flashback from one of the earlier seasons of somebody dying or getting killed and then we find out that it was him who did it it could have been the merge all okay so i'm trying to think if uh, if season three, where it's some time later, they're still at farm. The dagger has been stolen. Fane is gone, and then like Parrot finds out that White Cloaks are in the Two Rivers, and he leaves. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. Then you could have like, okay, Fane's gone. Slayer's there to Sugus Slayer's there to kill Fane. Right. Okay, that works. I like that. Yeah, and I'm uh, sad, but the door draw was Fain with the horn, and I, we we don't know that in the show though. There's no indication that that was Fain necessarily. Right. And they're almost. Yeah. I feel like that scene. You're almost led to believe that there was some some something else too. That's like it I wasn't. Thought. Yeah, the way it's framed, it's like something chased them off. And that's uh, it doesn't it does nothing on the show that indicates that Fane is special. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like it's supposed to be saying it's the Shanshin, but I don't think the Shanshin could have done that. No, it was it's like something Mali else came the... and and they left, and then like so later, you know, the Shanshin are there. But unless it was like a Shaman, I don't know why Shaman would do that, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, I thought that was very confusing. That, the interesting. Sorry, no. Go ahead. no I'm sorry. Wait, <laughs> Shonshin, if, if, if I believe in Shadow Spawn, they don't really, they don't, yeah. They don't think they deal. Okay. Well, just because they don't believe in it doesn't mean they wouldn't kill it if they saw it. It's true. Um, but then they would know that it was real because they'd. Do yeah, I think in the set, in the scene, they're made to believe that. The dark friends got scared off by something, but maybe they're just interpreting it wrong. Who knows? Yeah, that yeah. might be where there's like, hey, there's there's that clarification that got cut. You know, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're clashed back. If if we're going to get more fame, we might find out that he's the one who killed the merge all yeah. in in this season. Maybe that might. was in um, Ingtar's <laughs> right. death speech. He's... That was yeah, we didn't get maybe something. Yeah. Else. That's it. I mean, we talk about this a lot, but you know, they they feigns part in this season to give issue a bigger part, right? Because mm-hmm. like you couldn't have both of them doing that stuff. So I don't know. Uh, we'll find out. I I I will find out who who did that. I think like it, it, it should be important one way or the other. It's one of those questions when Rafe does Q and A. Should ask mm-hmm. him. Somebody write that down. Um, put it with those other questions we have written down. Yeah. And then, right, the main so the main plot in the Shadow Rising with Slayer Lord Luke, the first introduction to him is in the Two Rivers when Perrin goes back, and you know we did talk before. He's really, he's really the old Fane. The Dark One wants him to kill Fane because Fane's gone rogue. Um, and then Perrin just kind of gets in his way because Perrin's playing around in the Wolf Dream, and the the wolves know of Slayer, and you know. Wolves don't like Slayer. Slayer kills wolves. So Perrin, of course, naturally is going to be an adversary to him. And as you mentioned, Jen, in that great intro scene of Lord Luke, it's like Perrin immediately hated him. (laughs) (laughs) So that's, it's a fun part. uh, And I'm interested how they're going to do it because of, it's a great put in there, right? You're going to meet this Lord Luke guy who's kind of a pompous jerk. um, That's kind of middle of the, uh, all the people in the rivers, but then you've also got Fane there with white cloaks, with 
Dane, right? So you're going to have Fane and Dane, which is going to be kind of silly saying Fane and Dane. And then you're going to you're going to meet Trox. Do you think they're going to do like the two different shadow spawn? Like there's going to be sort of scene where the shadow spawn are attacking each other or it comes up like these shadow spawn are along with these shadow spawn. We don't and, and, necessarily know that Fane is going to be there, do we? No, no, we don't. He might not even be there. Yeah. Fane could be gone from the story for all right. we know. <laughs> so. It's just out there that we don't even, I don't think, I don't know if we have confirmation uh, of him like filming in that location. I don't know if we have confirmation of him filming at all. Yeah. I don't think you need to do that because, like, really, the, the important is that uh, that Slayer is bringing the Trollocs in. That's the important thing to to, to for for the other the audience to know is that, um, because they already names bad, right? Is that why? Yeah, and like, and is and, right. and Fame will have his own Trollocs right now. He didn't get them yet. That's what I'm saying. You're gonna. Th- you don't think it's gonna be like a, the Slayer's Trollocs versus Trollocs? No, it could be the Trollocs the are there. They're there. They're there. The White Cloak's busy enough that he, that Slayer can get Fane, right? So mm-hmm. the, the Fane will be undefended. You know, is, is is without the Slayer can get at him. That's why he's bringing those things in there, and he's just using the two rivers. People are just the pawns that are gonna get killed, right? Um, and then when it doesn't work. He then tries to get the two rivers people to kick the white cloaks out, hoping that Fane would stay because he really wants to get revenge there for his own reasons or whatever. Like he's just trying whatever whatever ways he can the mm-hmm. white cloaks away from Fane, right? That's what you're saying is going to happen in the show. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Simplify. I just have the one set of, of Trollocs, and you can make the story work perfectly, as you said and laid it out yeah. there. Um, I don't yeah, think I see the, them doing that. I don't think the Fane can take the dagger and then go to a Perrin storyline. Like if he's going to the two rivers, I don't think the dagger is I think the dagger is like done. So like if he takes the dagger, then it's like Matt wants to be with that storyline, but then he's with Perrin. It's like too much going forth. I feel like if Fane's in the two rivers, I don't think he'll have the dagger anymore. I think that's done. Yeah, so what yeah. It don't stain to the two rivers, as you're suggesting. Then what's Slayer's reason for being there? Well, that they, a different that they, reason. What? What though? You can't just write Kill something Perry. out and then you say he was the one reason. that was bringing the Trollocs in from the beginning, and uh, his plan is that he's he. It's a city. dark, but friend. it wasn't. We already know Fane was the one who brought the Trollocs. No, in. but he wasn't. He like he brought his own Trollocs in to kill Fane's Trollocs. Oh, but he was leaving the the way gate open, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. He was all like he all the new that come new trial, after okay. parents there or all his. Are all his. Um, okay. So if you don't have Fane there, uh, one, if Fane doesn't go, you might as well just not even bring that character back because he's pretty like he becomes less and less of a point as time goes on. You have to mm-hmm. start establishing that he's a serious threat now, or he's just not a threat. Um, he might not and, if and if you don't, and if he doesn't have the dagger, then you definitely should write him out, right? Because like, what's the point, right? But mm-hmm. um, you can have have the same plan that Fane has, and saying I'm going to the two rivers with Trollocs to draw Rand here, and I'm going to keep working until Althor shows up. And so he doesn't. Oh, he's there to kill. He's there to, which is basically what Fane is there for. Yeah, you can have him. Fane's reasoning. He's there to draw Rand to him because his orders, because he orders Slayer at some point to kill Rand, doesn't he? He does. So uh, looking up at this as well, this is pretty, this is what I found pretty interesting because I didn't catch this, I don't think, in any of my read throughs. He gets orders to kill Rand uh, in Winter's Heart. Um, Yeah. From someone he knows uh, for a second who is hiding himself although he's pretty sure it's a guy uh and he tries to go around he thinks he does but it's just two randos who are in the same inn that ram was sleeping it's in the, the old before. people he kills the old yeah. people yeah just yeah. a man and a woman who are in the same room that ran used to be sleeping in um yeah. the person who those orders is not at that time at forsaken it's taim is it taim gives him the orders it, it is, and it, this wasn't revealed definitively in the books. 
Uh, but this was, was revealed through Q and A's with Brandon. I think um, that um, like the going rogue a little bit, which is why he was hiding yeah. himself uh, to um, to trend. Because remember, at one point, uh, more he just was a male channeler. He had to be a forsaken, and basically. nobody else would dare uh, give him. There were Ashima around at that point, though. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Because it's telling other people to kill Rand as well. Remember um, uh, the two guys yeah, in Far Mad and get the the, the 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 three different directions. Yeah, Roche, Roche and uh, yeah, Kisman. Yeah. Like, attack him and um, right, like Path of Dagos. Tane tells him one thing. The Mandarin tells him something else, and then yeah, there's that whole scene. I remember reading that scene and right. reading like, it like oh, a gotta... dozen times to make right. sure I was reading it so, correctly. Well, we'll try and kill him. Whatever. I was like, I, well, no, I was like that was piece of definitive proof that Tame wasn't Demon Dread, right? Because they told them to do two different things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, Moradin ran to die because Moradin's brain is and Rands are confused. Like they don't want he Moradin's yeah. Moradin says kill him anymore because I might. Die. I always thought it was Demon Dread who sent him. To be honest with you, but but if Tame, oh Tame, well that's considering we confused those two. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we got so we've got a couple of different ideas then, right? So I think theory one is that um, Slayer goes there to kill. Fa- right, Fane goes there. I don't know why Fane goes there. I guess he don't, goes there for the same reason he is in the books. We know why Dane goes there. Maybe I don't know. So now there's three different people there for three different reasons. Dane's there to get revenge on Perrin. Fane's there to kill Rand, and then Slayer's there to kill Fane. That's too much. So that's that's one potential. Turns but there only to kill one, everybody. And there's only one set of Trollocs, right? Let's cut out the Fane Trollocs. We don't need them. Um, so all the try there with Slayer to go and try to get the you know distract the White Cloaks, so right. he can kill uh, Fane. Or Fane go to the two rivers. And we just give Slayer the same reason that Fane was there to draw Rand out so he can kill Rand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we know what Fane does. If Fane doesn't go there, like you said, there's no point in having him anymore almost. But I, what what could Fane do if he doesn't go to the two rivers? Like, who's Fane the- going? Who's he following now? Like, what's his. Because he's gone. Like, who's telling him to do stuff i don't know he's not a twisted like connect he's not yeah. to rand any like in this he's not crazy psycho because he hasn't been like infected with mashadar and in this yeah, right. at all so i he's very one. different yeah and, yeah so i don't know also um the wound that rets in his side is already a wound from shadow logoth so rand needs yes. to get another like evil <laughs> wound to go against Ooh. it Right, he doesn't so, need he or he doesn't need Fane to give him a wound in the side from the dagger. He's already got that. Yeah. What if Fane and Lanfear go to the waste? Fane, Fane, Lanfear, and Asmodian. So Fane is Hadnan Kadir. Fane is pretending to be Hadnan Kadir. Lanfear is pretending to be Keely, and then Asmodian is pretending to be. But uh, Rand would be like, "Hey, dude." No, he doesn't up? look like himself. He's. He's, he's got a mirror. They put a mess of mirrors on him. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I feel like she should just connect her. Maybe he would just connect himself to Lanfear or something. Since oh Shaman man, I, I hope they. Don't I don't do know. That, I, I, I don't just... want him to just like. I don't want him. From you describing him being in the two rivers, it's like way too much gone for a TV show. <laughs> that storyline. So, like, there's three people that have three different reasons. But I really like. Fane on the show. I like Johan Meyer. I think he's great. Yeah, I he's feel sad good. to lose him completely. So um even though we wouldn't he would be sky so it wouldn't even be him we'll have but... to do an episode just about talking about fane for the yeah what, I don't, the next season I don't because know. if he doesn't have all those crazy things that he has in the books like with the like i said the in the master star stuff which yeah. and he's he's basically almost at this point in the books like what do they do with him i don't i mean that, that could be an episode we could we could get a song for that one you could uh, do all of that or most of no, that no no you're gonna you still have an opportunity in this season <laughs> we'll to get him to that point but yes, let's do that. I yeah. love, I love, I have the title of the episode. You write it down, otherwise you're going to forget it. No, no there's no way I'm going to forget it. I already have it. 
It's a lot there. <laughs> All right, people, you you heard it here. He's not gonna forget it. Okay. I might have to pull this clip out in a few weeks when <laughs> he forgets it. All right. Um, do you guys have any final thoughts? Tom, did, was there anything? I know you looked in the interview database. It, was there anything that we didn't talk about that you wanted to to bring up? No, I think we, we hit on a lot of the uh, things that I thought were interesting out of that. Just a couple of things about um, about Slayer himself. He's a, uh, in some ways, a dark mirror of Perrin. Perrin has the human and the wolf side. While he while Slayer's not a wolf brother, he has this kind of duality about himself as well. Mm-hmm. Also, all these powers in the dream world. Um, you know, Slayer's a... Uh, in my mind, more if I like the the idea of like this kind of dark reflection thing than than uh, the werewolf vibe that that Parrot is. Um, one thing about that I was looking up that I didn't realize and uh, was uh, the Dragon name is mm-hmm. um, is a dragon and a Drake are the same or two similar words, right? Mandrake. Uh, Mandrake, Mandrake is a is uh, a plant that um is also fork in real life, right? It is a plant that has like this toxic uh, narcotic, mm-hmm. and has a long history of being associated with with uh with horses because its forked root looks like a person walking a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that's part called of- man Drake as well. Yeah, exactly. So um. You know, the engine, while I think for land side, that's like a man on the side of the dragon. For Isam, it's like man opposed to the dragon. So there's like a little duality in that last name. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that. Uh, then Isam, I think, is like a, an Arabic name. In part, uh, it means loyalty. His loyalty, of course, is to the Dark One. Um, so those are the things I found. Uh, in regards to him, there's a lot of stuff that he does with Perrin later in the in the books that mm-hmm. if we ever do a follow up Perrin episode, will come up in my research. But really, don't have a lot to do with Slayer. So, yeah, I thought those were interesting tidbits. Yeah, I like the Mandrake one. Didn't yeah. never heard of that one. I I um, I, I wouldn't find this out earlier. Like uh, I think we episode where we were talking about like is there for real life, and there is. Now we know what it is. Yeah. It's poison. You know what would be cool? I'm I'm picturing Slayer as Predator and then Perrin as as Arnold Schwarzenegger and that just the scenes of the the two of them in the movie Predator. That's just what's happening in Teleran Riyadh when Perrin and Perrin and Slayer fight. <laughs> I like it. I that's so all. one more thing uh about Slayer. Uh so uh their 1986 release from Blood has been an influence to extreme and thrash metal <laughs> yes. bands since the release. Yeah. And it's considered a record which set the bar for death metal. Um, yeah, Slayer, man. There you go. That's all you in Blood. <laughs> I'll play a little Slayer at the end of this episode. No, I won't, because we'll get sued. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a good place to wrap it up. I want to remind everyone to follow us on social media. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Join us over in Discord to continue the conversation there. We also post our episodes on YouTube, so go check out our YouTube page to watch us and like and subscribe. Rate and review us wherever you listen to podcasts and check out our merchandise and Patreon pages to support us that way. Any final thoughts, Jen and Tom? No, it's March. Enjoy the month of March. Spring is coming. Spring. <laughs> and uh, the warm weather's coming for those of you who have cold winters. So it's coming. Like us. New life. Once closer to the release of season three. <laughs> and that's all I got. Yeah. Uh, oh, we forgot to we forget news that we were just talking about before we started recording. So, uh, Guy Roberts is going to be at JordanCon, uh, which is only about a, a six or seven weeks away. So, if you're planning on going to JordanCon, or if you weren't and now you want to go to JordanCon, I think there are still tickets available. So, go check out their and website. By the time that the episode drops, they'll the the tickets will be closed. I think <laughs> JordanCon.org. Go get your tickets now. It looks like there's still uh it looks like there's tickets, tickets available, available right now. So so 
Um, of course, Guy Raul will also be appearing at WatCon. So if you can't make Jordan Con, you could always go to WatCon or vice versa. You got two chances to meet him. Yeah. Don't miss we'll only, out. We'll only be at WatCon this year. So if you want to see Guy Roberts and us, you know what choice you're going to make. Yeah. And if you're going to Jordan Con, take lots of pictures and send them to us because we're going to yeah, have t- major FOMO. Take a picture like this. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. And then we can put ourselves in between you and Guy Roberts. Oh, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. All right. It can happen, folks. All right. Enough of the silliness. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And you'll hear us next time. <laughs>